Hi, it's Rob Moore here from Progressive on the Couch with Peter Singh. Peter, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. And everyone, this is Peter. Now, you would not believe what an amazing, truly deeply moving story Peter has. Now, um, we may have time to go into it in this video. If we don't in this video, you certainly will see it. Uh, Peter's made a very, very significant amount of income in a short, po a short period of time using a particular strategy that you may know that we've been teaching recently and I just wanted to give the chance for Peter to, to share with you what he's done. So, Peter, um, can you just tell us uh, what the, the net income is from the portfolio that you've built or you control? At the moment where passive income I'm taking from the multi debt strategy that I'm doing at the moment is around £6,000 per month. Okay, and um, in how long has it taken you to build that passive income? Since March of this year. Okay, so we're talking about what that's ooh, that's 10 months about 10 months. 10 months so in 10 months you've gone from did you start with income or were you at zero i started at zero um basically in february of this year i had uh, i had some money coming payment protection reclaim yeah um i'd saved some income from my previous job mm -hmm. and i was made redundant from my previous job in march of this year which i was yeah. given a little bit of money for as well sure um and then I got cracking in March. Yeah. Okay. Year. So you you did the multi let without the sweat training with us. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I did that in uh, I think it was July or August of this yeah. year. Okay. Um, so started in March, trained with us in July August. Now we're kind of six months after that, a little bit more, and you've gone from zero to six thousand net a month. That's right. Yeah. So can you just detail that out a bit? So you're using the rent to rent multi let without the sweat strategy. That's right. So um, roughly how many properties is that? Talk us through some of the numbers. Well, basically at the moment, I've just completed on my seventh. I'm yeah. currently in negotiations with a private landlord at the moment. Yeah. Um, where I'm expecting to take three on. Okay. Um, I started off with the first one, which went off really great. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I worked out the worst case scenario I was expecting to cash flow about 600 a month off of it. Okay. Um, on the first one, I cash flowed 950 pounds. Wow. Um, on your first deal, yeah, yeah. and it was uh, it, it was very um, shocking at the time, yeah. but it, it gave a good confidence boost. To what shocking, on. as in you didn't expect that much? I didn't expect nine fifty. Mm. No, um, yeah. I was expecting around about five hundred, six hundred. Sure. Okay, so just I just want to pause at this point because what I don't want anyone to think that this is one of these videos where I would just show you how easy it is and it's a doddle and you can get rich in five minutes. I know you've worked hard That's in that time, even though it's a short time. You got 950 in your first deal. I mean, you know, has every deal been smooth? Uh, just, just sort of talk over, you know, how easy you found it. No, not not every deal has been smooth. Um, like, for example, the first one, it worked very well. The, we took the house on. We had it fully tenanted within about two and a half weeks. Wow. The quality, we, 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 the house, we took the rent on at £1,100. The utilities, including council tax, was around about £280. Mm. 1380 was our overheads. Yeah. Uh, we were taking £500 for one of the rooms downstairs. Uh, I think it's £400 for the back room, £420 for the middle room, mm. uh, £520 for one of the front ones upstairs, and mm. it was £480 for the other one. Sure. It was cash flowing around £900, £950. Yeah. Um, the house itself was a very good quality house, mm. um, and I think that's what helped us to do very well. Sure. Some of the obstacles we've come across have been, we've, got, we've had houses that, uh look good when you view it mm. um we've, <laughs> if they look good when you view it like you look yeah. at it and you're like yep yeah, i'll take yeah. it if it's my criteria i'm looking for three bedroom two reception yeah. house it's perfect yeah um but then when you actually get to get to grips with it and you start putting the beds in and the furniture and you realize that there's uh things in the house that need dealing with for yeah. example you get mold sometimes yeah. Um, sometimes you, i've realized from experience now that you get houses where wood flooring you think yeah it looks good mm -hmm. But when you're actually there and you, and you stay in that multi let for a few days while yeah. you're working on it, you yeah. realise that um, it's not very comfortable. Sure. So yeah. sometimes you've got a carpet. So expenses okay. do build up. Sure. Um, there's some of the obstacles we've had. Sometimes I've had obstacles where um, the house has been too far away from the train station. Yeah. Um, and I've gone for the quality of the house and I thought, yeah, it's fine. Mm. Um, and those houses take a little bit longer to... Sure. To multi-let out. But you're saying all this and still in a really about six months, you've gone from zero to, 
actual houses zero to what seven that's right yeah. and zero to six thousand a month that's right so yeah you've had challenges but you've also done an you know do you feel like quite proud of what you've done yeah i feel i feel i feel proud of what i've done but i feel if i'm to be honest this year was about laying the foundation yeah uh, I mean, when I mean this year, I mean last year was about laying yeah. the foundation. Yeah. This year is the year to really to go forward and crack on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. So, uh, what's your targets? Where do you want to be? Well, I mean, my targets for this year, mm. I, I want to be, I want to be hitting at least two or three multi-lets per month. I want to build a team wow. that work with me. Yeah. Um, and I want to eventually be mentoring people as sure. well. I'm already doing that on the side at the moment. Mm. I want to have the website up and running sure. and everything going. So. Okay. So. Obviously, for those people who don't really know what rent to rent or multi-let without the sweat strategy is, you're not even buying these properties, are you? No, you're not. So you're not. So you said earlier about you know you, you you collected a bit of cash together from redundancy and bits and bobs. Yeah. So, but but what was that cash for? Did so you use basically, it? Basically, um, basically, what had happened all my life, I've not really been able to save money. Mm. Um, how old are you? Um, I'm 26. All oh, your life, yeah. <laughs> most of my <laughs> yeah, life. Well, I sure. feel old now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, uh, most of my life, I've not been able to save money. Um, mm. I was determined that, that the place that I worked previously before I got made redundant was Ford Motor Company. They pay quite well, even though it's production line yeah. work. Mm -hmm. It pays okay compared to the jobs that I've done previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was determined to save money in that time then. I did. Mm -hmm. um, one month before I left, I had a payment protection claim come through. Sure. That was about two and a half thousand yeah. pounds. And what did you use that money for? If you're not putting deposits in, yeah. was that just to sort of fund? Because have you been doing this full time? Well, now I've gone full time, yeah. Right, but yeah, you hadn't I'll, initially. And, uh, I ba I've basically gone full time by about a month into it mm -hmm. because I've been made redundant. Yeah. And But there's certain areas that we'll cover sure. later about what. what yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, so, how much do you think? Does anyone, do, do people need a lot of money to start this? No, you don't. No. I mean, like I said, I got two and a half grand from the payment protection claim. Mm -hmm. I had about uh, four thousand pounds when I left my previous job, and I'd saved about five thousand. Mm -hmm. But I didn't need ten thousand pounds to no. start. The actual so if someone investment, watching the video doesn't have ten thousand pounds, I mean, they can't start. No, it doesn't because the amount of money I actually invested in my first multi let, the house was eleven £1 hundred pounds per month rent. Mm -hmm. I paid one month deposit, one month advance rent. 2,200 and I think the administration fees, the state agent fees come to about 350, mm. but within about 2,200, say about 2,600 pounds. Yeah. And then I'm not going to have to furnish it. Yeah. Um, that costs about 800 pounds putting the beds in and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. So altogether about, about 3,000, 3,200 pounds. But then but you're getting 950 you're, rent, so you get that back you get in money four back. months. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I suppose you didn't, but just thinking creatively, yeah. even if someone doesn't have that money, I guess they could JV. Yeah, they you could JV. There's partner. always other alternatives. I mean, you could JV. You could potentially, like I just said, that you've paid eight hundred pounds to put the furniture in the house. Mm. You don't have to put the furniture in all the rooms. No, you could sure. potentially put yeah. a double bed and a wardrobe. Mm. Furnish that room for a bed costs a hundred pounds. Wardrobe yeah. might cost you fifty pounds. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you could. It costs you two about maybe one hundred between one hundred and fifty to two hundred pounds to furnish the room. Mm -hmm. You could put that for a viewing, and then just and then when the tenants come around, you can show them the rooms, and you can just say that you can explain to them that this room how this is furnished will be the same mm. quality in the other rooms yeah. and when that gets taken and you've got money coming there then you can use that to sure. furnish the other one if yeah. you wanted to do it like that mm -hmm. okay so there's always other options sure so um since knowing you uh, and again we might get a chance to talk in a bit more detail about how you got into this business because it will blow you away um you really have done a lot in a short period of time and i've seen other people who've been exposed to this strategy who've bought one or two or you know or controlling one or two however you you know uh, packaging it whatever you want to call it but not really got the results that you have so much so that i mean i was a bit reticent about doing this video because six thousand pound passive income in a few months does sound a bit like mm. you know hula uh, you know like like what a lot of those people promote that yeah. i know is possible because i've seen it so many times but i know that not everyone does do it what would you say to someone who's maybe as motivated as you would want those results? What would your top bit of advice be, seeing as you've done it? I mean, the the best advice that I would give is that we 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 can learn strategies, we can learn how to do things, but but you need to get up and put it into action. That's the main thing I've learned. Um, and just 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 even if you start with the with the thought in mind that you're going to take this one on and just do one mm -hmm. 
from there build your confidence you might have a bad start you might have a good start but even if you have a bad start that doesn't mean put your hands down and sure. that's it game over yeah, yeah. Mm. Look, look at the positives in every situation mm -hmm. and embrace them and, sure. and try and move forward that's yeah. what I've tried to do all the way through mm -hmm. did um, you think it was important because obviously you train with us and it sounds like you learned as much actually doing it as you did training yourself as well but did you think getting yourself educated was important of course yeah education is very important I mean um the fact is, you can learn from your own experiences, which you learn a lot from as well. But, but it can cost you a lot of money, yeah, can't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, it, it can be, um, how do I put it, um, you can learn, learning from a training company like here and, and educating yourself is important because it helps you to learn from other people's mistakes. Sure. Um, and that's, that, mm -hmm. that's part of the learnings as well. Okay, so um, a bit later on in another video, we're going to talk about your full story. So let's not go into the detail here. But could you just very briefly share where you were a couple or three or four years ago? Uh, just give us, you know, the, the real brief outline so that, you know, people can really get to grips with how amazing it is, is what you've done. Where well, I was three or four years ago. You know, just uh, the whole journey. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know this, um, mm. Peter and I are talking because we know each other quite well, but uh, at the back of what, the masterclass, you came to our masterclass, yeah. a four day event and, you know, um, Peter was quite quiet and was giving me the eyes the whole weekend. I was trying all weekend to crack you and I had to get you involved in yeah. it all. And at the end on the fourth day, he pulled me aside, pulled me right to the back of the room and just told me his whole story, really emotional. And um, it was, it's just amazing. So I know we haven't got, you know, hours and it took us a long time to talk about it, but just tell everyone kind of really briefly where you were, what you've gone through and now where you are. Um, basically four years ago, um I was basically going through a time in my life where I was gambling. Um, it started off at a young age where I was gambling and I used to lose quite a lot of money. Um, there came a phase in my life when I started to make money from it. Um, my friends started to find out about it. They wanted to get involved. Um, I didn't want to gamble with other people's money, especially friends. Um, I gave in to the pressures at the time and I did, and I, and I, and I did gamble with their money. Um, and that's what they wanted to do and they expected a high return from it. It never worked out the way that they wanted it to work out. Um, in a nutshell, it, it basically turned very nasty. Um, it turned nasty. And these people basically um, wanted their money back. They wanted their money back. Um, in a nutshell, they basically wanted their money back. They stole some money from my family. My family, mum and dad worked in factories all their life, so raising a large amount of money was very hard for them. These mm -hmm. people were demanding like 19, 20,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, for my family, this was hard. They had to take loans out at the time. Mm. I was be receiving threats that I would get killed. My family would be killed. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell my family that these were the threats that I was receiving. Although I, I didn't want to let them know that their lives could be at risk. Mm. Sure. But I told them that mine was. Mm -hmm. That was the only way. I could, and my father was surprisingly very supportive. Me and my father didn't have a very good relationship up until that point. Mm -hmm. um, briefly, my father did raise the money over three installments. They sent a mi middle person to come and take the money from my father at a service station. These people were part of the Sikh, local Sikh community within my area um, who, who'd grow, who I'd grown up with, who I thought at the time were my friends. Well, obviously, in hindsight, when I look now, I realise what kind of friends they were. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is, um, they took that money and then uh, having taken that money, my, my father had said to these people at the service station, from this day onwards, you, you, you leave my son alone, otherwise we're going to the police. At the time when these people wanted the money, my father said, let's go to the police. And I told my father it wasn't an option because these people had said that they've got contacts within the police and if mm. I inform the police that I'll get killed. Mm. And at the time I was believing every single threat. Mm. Um, somebody who I thought was my best friend at the time was giving me advice 
in favour of those people and mm. I wasn't realising. Mm. So I was being manipulated all the way along. Mm -hmm. um, three months had gone on since, but, but just as my father had paid the last instalment, they started to pester me again that we want more money, we want more money. Um, and I said, I can't do that. I said, so they were asking for more than what you owed them, were they? Yeah, and the, 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 they wanted more. They were saying that I owed them £50,000, they wanted more. And at the time, I didn't feel that I should have even have to owe them £19,000 because the fact is that they chose to be involved in this. I didn't mm. go running to them, I didn't sure. ask them. I didn't say, here, here, come on, mm. let's do this. They wanted to be part of it. And then when it didn't go the way they wanted it to go, mm. they wanted to get nasty. And uh, at the time, I didn't even have the courage to speak up to them and say what my inner feelings were yeah at the time i was thinking well why the, what the hell mm. but i couldn't because i was just constantly had the had the, the fear inside me that i couldn't mm. speak up to these people mm. um and that fear was just building up inside and inside mm. and then it was um it reached a stage that they then said to me that we're going to set a company up in your name and uh it's going to trade legitimately in that and we're going to get the rest of our money like that and 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 for me, I, I didn't know what to say or do. At, the, at that time, the, the the pressures they were putting on me had been relaxed, mm. because now in hindsight, when I look at it, it's because they're getting what they wanted. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they had done that basically. Mm. They took documents from me, my passport and stuff, mm. and uh, eventually they uh, basically committed a multi-million pound fraud. Not them themselves, but through people that they um, they were they knew. Basically, multi-million pound fraud had been committed in my name, um, along with uh, along with the other people that it was for. Um, they had basically um, said to me, from the moment that that they that they had done the fraud, during the fraud, I was I was working in a pound shop on a till. Um, that was while this was all going on. Mm -hmm. Then I was told that you have to do this you have to go to um you have to go to poland you have to go to india and for me it's shocking I'll, i've been mummy and daddy's for my life mm. i live with my family sure and I'll, I'll say i can't make these sacrifices i can't do this mm. they said well you have to do it and 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 th that same fear was coming back again what they were mm. putting on me when they were, took the money from my father so, at so, the time, so, so just so we can understand this because obviously yeah. this sounds quite complicated that they were using your name to what would when you say commit fraud what they were basically what they were doing was they were basically doing a VAT fraud um, and how much money did they rack up in this fraud in your name uh, basically they owed tw 20 million pounds I think it was 10 million pounds of money VAT on my name yeah <laughs> which was quite shocking at the time I mean they were basically um, the way that they had manipulated me to such extent oh no it's nothing it's just mm. all right and so what, they just were getting you to sign stuff signing like stuff that. and yeah. I didn't at, the, at that time my, my state of mind was so bad I didn't you could put a death well, certificate in front of me and I wouldn't even know yeah, I'm signing it you know sure, yeah. and for me it was like the pressure was on and I was mm. signing and then they were sending eventually they were sending me to this office you know because mm. this uh, I mean I know you don't know yeah. you might not necessarily know this but obviously I, I you told Mark this as well at the master class right. when you told me I could feel everything you were telling me I just believed you 100% yeah. Mark's is kind of like he needs the proof kind of person right. so when he fact it's a quite a high profile case right, online yeah, yeah. and he found it online very quickly and um, mm. unbelievable unbelievable so um has this been resolved yet um you know have you been I mean, going you know yeah tell you know where are you at now with it I mean, so basically what had happened was in a nutshell what happened they they were basically manipulating me right they they, they, they commit the fraud in my name they were using me as a dummy telling me to go to this office where there was nothing there mm -hmm. to sit there all day it was basically a pure stitch up so i'm sitting in the office so so when it when it comes to police they're going to say to them that he was the guy going to the office, right. he's running the business, mm. he's the director of this company, mm. we all paid our VAT, this man didn't pay it, right. it's his problem, we're legitimate yeah. traders, he's mm. the VAT man who has it. Mm. And for me it was shocking. Have you ever, did you, I've never been in any trouble with the nah. police whatsoever in my life. And for me, it was so shocking. Did, you know, did they, um, has, it, has this concluded? Has anyone been arrested? Well, How yeah, it goes, what happened with what? Yeah, yeah so but, but basically what had happened was eventually um, my house was raided by police in August 09 um, and that was a very scary incident for myself and my family because mm. we never experienced this kind of trouble mm. uh, 
Um, but I could sit here and talk all day about this. If I was to go briefly into it, my house was raided and I was taken to the police station. And when I was told by the gang that I'm not allowed to um, comment at the police station, I'm to say no comment. Mm -hmm. um, they put a solicitor in place that was going to direct my case in favour of them so I wouldn't actually get the freedom to say what I really want so to say. So they even had the solicitor yeah, that's bunged. Right. Yeah, and um, it was really nasty time. Mm. Um, How long has this whole thing lasted? This lasted for, uh, from, the rest was taken in 09. This company stuff started in January 09 and it all got done and dusted in June of this year. Uh, June of last year, sorry. I so June yeah. 2012. Yeah, that's right. So the whole thing lasted, what, three years? The, uh, well, the, it started, uh, yeah, the, th the, the company stuff started in mm. yeah, three years. And the gambling stuff? The gambling stuff was in summer 2008. So you're they took the money from my father yeah. about November 2008. So you're talking a whole four-year yeah. process. Have you been, is your name being cleared yet? That's right, I've been cleared. I've, when did that happen? I was acquitted at a trial by jury in June of this year. How many death threats have you had? Um, I've, had I've had a lot of death threats. Really? Um, during the time... During the time of my, um, during the time they were taking the money from my family, I was threatened a lot that if I didn't pay up my heart, people would come into power. It was to the extent these people, that they wasn't taking no for an answer and mm. I felt that I couldn't stand up for myself with the pressure that was mm. there. Eventually, when they when they had basically put me in with this solicitor and, and, and I was to give no comment, even then I, 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 my inner voice was telling me you've got to mm. stand up. Sure, I, yeah. couldn't, I, couldn't, mm. I couldn't build the courage. No, well, I think everyone would understand why. It's not, I don't think it's anything to do with courage. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean... Um, Eventually, I did. I, I did decide to change. It took me a long time. Mm. It was. Uh, it reached January, January two thousand and eleven. I changed. I decided mm. to take a stand. Mm. Um, even at that point, I couldn't tell my family that this was the friend. The friend. Uh, I was bottling all in myself. Sure. My yeah. family didn't even know about the game because that's a big thing in the sea mm. culture. Yeah, yeah. You know. Sure. You can't. Um, and, and for me, I was just bottling it all in, trying mm. to deal with it inside mm. my own mind. Um, so since it's all finished. How's the relationship with your family now? It's excellent now. Is it? Yeah. And I mean, is that one of the silver linings, is it, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, if I look at what's, what, what's come out of it, I mean, I think this was a blessing. Mm. I mean, when I look at it now, I mean, the fact is that any big event that happens in your life is an opportunity for a big change. Mm, sure. Um, yeah. And I took it as an opportunity to change. Mm. And it also made me realise the, the, the power of the decisions we make in our life. Mm -hmm. um, when you when I actually decided to stand up for myself and I stuck by that this, first I decided to stand up for myself and then I was tr the, 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 the threats come on to me again mm. and I gave in again as well mm, yeah. and then they changed me back to another one yeah. and then I decided once and for all that I'm going to make a decision I'm going to stick to this decision I don't care what's going to happen mm -hmm. and when I made that decision I stuck by it and, and I went through regardless of, they, they gave me a number of threats, even when I changed this, even when I went to the one that they wanted me to go to, they were, they, they were um, threatening me, they were saying to me, you need to um, show your defence statement, they started following me in cars to, to mm. try and get me, but I just wasn't having none of it at no. that point, I just had enough. And do you think um, that, what you've that, learned, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, Peter, do you think that that you've learned, do you think it helped you in your property business? Of course, mm -hmm. massively. I mean, when I, the, the positive attitude that I took from the challenges that I faced between 2008 to 2012, even up to and during the trial, um, the mindset that I acquired during the last, say, year or so, two years up to the trial, has helped me massively throughout mm. life in all aspects of my sure. life as well. It's helped me massively. I mean, when I do my multi-let strategy, I don't have no time for negative attitude. It no. just has to be positive, positive, positive. Mm. You're going to get an obstacle. You've just got to deal with it and yeah. overcome it. You ain't mm. got no time to sit there and, and put your hands down. For, yeah, oh, yeah. no, this has happened. No, no sure. you've just got to crack on. Yeah. You've got to find ways around things, you know? Mm. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and do you think that's helped you do so well so quick? I think that's contributed towards it. I mean, mm. the fact is we can have all the strategies in the world, but in my opinion, you need to uh, be willing to take the action. Sure. As soon as you become willing to take the action mm -hmm. and, 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 and you make strong decisions yeah. and you stick to those decisions, stay focused with those decisions, mm -hmm. I, think, I think we can achieve whatever we want. Sure. Um, 
you don't have to be nothing special, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's what I've realised. The, the, the more courage you can demonstrate and the more good quality decisions we can make in life, these are what shape our destiny, mm. innit? Sure. And for me, um, I realised that through the challenges that I faced with all this legal case that I went through, and I've managed to take that into what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe helped me to be successful. Mm -hmm. but so do you think anyone has any excuses not to succeed? No. No. Nobody has an excuse not to succeed. I mean, the fact is we just need to be committed. We need to set mm -hmm. goals. One mm -hmm. thing I've learned is the power of setting goals. Yeah. I mean, I think it was at the end of 2000 and, uh, what year was it? End of 2011. Um, I went away for three days to set some goals for 2012. Mm. I set a yearly goals, what mm. I wanted to achieve. Mm. And I achieved all of them. Yeah. But um, that's it. bigger that's ones what, then. <laughs> hey, I need to set more bigger yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but I mean, that was the first time I did it. Mm. And the thing is, when you set these goals, and, and, and even if they're big or small, when mm. you achieve them, it gives you a sense of satisfaction. Sure. It helps to build your confidence. Mm. And it makes you realise that you can, you, mm. you can really take this somewhere. Sure. And I think the important in life, uh, the important thing in life is that we need to. We've got time to do other things in life, but we don't take no time out to set our goals and and, and mm. be committed to them. Sure. And setting the goals is one thing, but being committed to yeah. them is another. Mm. Um, mm. It does require a lot of uh, energy put towards it, mm -hmm. and, and, and it requires focus. But sure. the rewards are re you can yeah. reap the rewards at the end of it. Yeah. Um, mm. I cannot see how anybody watching this video could not be 100% inspired. I cannot see that. I'm sure there are going to be loads of people that want to meet you. Uh, you know, I want to, you know, just, I'm sure there'll be a lot, a lot of people just wanted to thank you. I can tell you this because we've sent out thousands of emails over the years. We are going to get flooded with emails telling us what an inspiration you are. So I just want to thank you for that. I'm just grateful to be in this position where I can be the facilitator of this information because we were just talking before yeah. this video about how I feel like our industry needs to see this because you know our industry sometimes does get a bit of a bad name you know just taking it from my point of view we've trained a lot of people you've sat in courses with us you know you're always sat there at the front you're always coming up to me at events saying you know shaking my hand saying how great everything is how grateful you are yeah. and you go and you do stuff and then there are other people who don't go and do stuff and sometimes our, the industry, you know, or, or people get tarred with the brush of other people. And you've just said it really simply. Go out, make a decision, do it. It's done. No excuses. And I just want to thank you for allowing us to, to share this with everyone. Um, at the same time, I want to thank you because you've been a great inspiration to me throughout my journey. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And <laughs> likewise, I mean, you know, I feel very humbled. Um, so, if people want to catch up with you, should we give you a minute or you're all right? No, that's fine. That's fine. That's all right. <laughs> um, are you going to, you maybe be at some of our events coming up, will you? Some awesome networking events? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to be at the next Super Conference yeah. event. Um, I'm currently signed up to some of the packages. Um, yeah. uh, with Johnny Cass, I'm, I'm going to be there at yeah. the end of the month okay. uh, for mindset training. Do you get to networking events as well? Do you sometimes go to other Yeah, I'm, 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 I'll go to the regular networking events in Canary Wharf. Yeah. Um, Great. My area that I work in is Greenwich. Yeah. Um, and I can, I'm, I'm, I'm basically at the Canary Wharf. Yeah. And I also go to the Berkshire Property Meet as well. Right. And I'll be there next month wearing something silly again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, maybe I'll get you on stage at the Super Conference, Sh share a bit more about your story, be up for that? Yeah, I'm always up for a challenge. Yeah. All right, brilliant. Yeah, Peter, thank okay, you very thank much. You very That's much. amazing. Thank you. Okay,